Your Honor, I object. Dr. Saberg was not on the witness list. Well, that's true, Your Honor, but she is a qualified psychiatrist who was brought in to examine Dr. Truman during the research. And that's why. Why, of all the doctors in the world, why Dr. Saberg? Sit down, Mr. Manning. No, I'm sorry, I have to say that uh, this is blatantly unfair. I don't know how she's going to be objective. Mr. Manning, I said sit down. Another outburst like that, and I will have you removed from this courtroom. Jessica. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Oh, come here, come here. Oh, your mommy missed you so much. Well, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be in your honeymoon. Hello. We were, but uh, we decided to come home early. Oh, hi, baby. Oh, look at her. She's gotten so big. We missed you so much. Is that why you came back? Because you missed her? Well, I just couldn't stop thinking about her. Yeah, well, that's the way I feel when I'm away from her. But then, of course, we feel that way. She's our daughter. She's a part of us. So, you plan on asking Natalie to marry you or not? I told her how I felt about her. Oh, it's about damn time. No one in their right mind wants to ask someone to spend the rest of their life with them from a hospital bed. You're having second thoughts, huh? What is going on? Your Honor, you're not you and everyone else in this courtroom witnessed my client have a nervous breakdown on the stand. Now, it's my contention that he's no longer fit to stand trial. Dr. Saybrook has met the defendant previously and is familiar with his history. Broder. Spencer. Mr. Broad is a witness. All right, I'm Dr. Spencer Truman, a very Spencer. esteemed sturgeon and very important member Spencer. of this community. I'm not down. crazy. Spencer. I am a murderer, and I Spencer. try to prove my down. Now. Sit down. Sit down. That was fine. I'm going to allow Dr. Saber to testify. Why would you say something like that? You know that it's upsetting. No, I, just, I, was, just, I was just stating fact. We're her parents. Well, it's also a fact that Antonio is... Don't, Jessica. I'm not upset. Nash is Bree's father. And the one thing we know for sure is that you love your daughter very much. Yeah. We appreciate you keeping her for us while we were gone. Well, and I enjoyed every moment of it. So why did you guys come back? What was your bad weather? Oh, no, no, no. It, uh, it was actually perfect. And we enjoyed the few days we were there. But uh, like Jessica said, we missed Bree and Jamie. Yes, we did. We missed you so much. Did you miss us, sweetheart? Hmm? Hi. Mm -hmm. smile. <laughs> I got a second chance. I just want to do it right. Mom actually brought the engagement ring, and um, when we still thought you were dead, uh, you okay? Yeah. Uh, Mom gave the engagement ring to Natalie. I see. Now look, I mean, it's not like she's going to be any less thrilled when you slide it on her finger yourself. You know, when Natalie first thought you were alive but couldn't get any proof, she actually... She tried to dig up your grave to get a DNA sample. Natalie. Yeah, no surprise there. She's lucky she didn't get busted. <clears throat> Starts to talk, huh? Yeah, well, you inhaled a lot of smoke. But I figure 
little while, you'll be back to your old monosyllabic self. Sorry. Mm. That, that wasn't funny, was it? It's okay. It was kind of funny. Johnny, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just so damn happy you're alive. How bad is it, Mike? What? The burns in my face. Not too bad. I want to see. Your Honor, I know this witness. I have to ask that she be recused on the grounds of prejudice. Against whom? Todd Manning. Based on her personal history with Todd Manning, it is not possible for her to be objective, and therefore the validity of her testimony would be compromised. But Mr. Manning is neither a principal nor a witness in this case. But his ex-wife is, Your Honor. Ms. Williamson, does Dr. Saybrook have a direct connection to either the defendant or to the victim's family? She has a direct connection to the key witness in this case, Your Honor, but not to the accused. Then I see no reason for prejudice. Dr. Saybrook, you may take the stand. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth? Nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. I was so impressed. So are the doctors. So that means they're going to release him from the hospital for some Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then Zane and I can join Kevin in London. Kelly, are you really sure about this? It's such a big move. I am sure. I, I would have told you if I had changed my mind. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Can I get a club soda? Do you want a club soda? That'd be great. Thank you. Sure. No Thank problem. You. Do you not approve? Oh, it's not that at all. I want what's best for you, honey, if it's going to make you happy, you know? I never would have made this decision if I didn't think it was going to make me happy. No, I'm... I guess what I'm concerned about is that you might be very lonely over there. You know, your, your friends, your family, they're all here. I know. And I'm going to miss everybody so much, but I just need to get away from the sadness and from the bad memories. Start someplace new. And maybe when we're not so much in the spotlight, Kevin and I can come back and we can live here and be happy and enjoy it. But right now, I just want to concentrate on making new memories with my son and with Kevin. And I got to tell you, there's something so exciting about starting a new life in a, in a new place, a new home. Well, it's all about hope, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think you can stay at least until Christmas? Would you consider that? We'll see. But you have so much to celebrate this year. And Jessica is a married woman. She's got a beautiful new baby. And John is alive. So this is going to be the best Christmas in Natalie's life. I hope so. That child really deserves some happiness. You want to see yourself? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Okay. But, um, you know, they don't usually leave mirrors just lying around hospital rooms, you know? Look at the drawer. Who knew? Listen, I want you to understand. You still have a lot of reconstructive surgery, healing, skin grafts. It's going to be a long Mike. Just do it. Okay. Well, it was, uh... Scar's gonna be kinda hard to shave around. I think you need another excuse not to shave. It's not that bad, right? Not bad at all. So when do I get out of here? Well, you have to um, regain your strength, mobility. You know, there's gonna be a lot more surgeries and and the thing is when when you have it's such extensive burning 
you, you have a very large risk of infection. Truman's trial should be over soon. They're uh, going into closing arguments today, maybe tomorrow. Well, maybe I'll be out in time for the execution. Dr. Saybrook, I understand you had the chance to examine Dr. Truman prior to his breakdown on the stand. I did. We had six sessions, enough for me to get a sense of his normal behavior. And you had the chance to examine him again this afternoon during the recess? Yes. Well, could you please tell the court, in your opinion, his current mental state? I found Dr. Truman highly delusional, uh, out of touch with reality, with his surroundings. Is it correct to say that he was agitated? Extremely, yes. Well, then, given his extreme agitation, did you find it necessary to sedate him? I gave him a sedative. Now, would you say, Dr. Saybrook, that what we saw in court, what Dr. Truman experienced, was a full-blown psychotic episode? You could call it that, yes. Objection, Your Honor. I move that that statement be stricken from the record. Sit down, Doctor. Thank you very much. It's become quite obvious to me that Casey. my attorney has become quite the smitten time, with the witness. To to have me down committed and be so he can quiet. have it all to himself. Please. Never mind. Dr. Saybrook, would you say that Dr. Truman's behavior just now, his paranoid reaction to your testimony, his incoherent ramblings, are all part of what you agreed was a psychotic break? I would, yes. Well, then could you please tell the court, in layman's terms, what you suspect might have led to his breakdown? Well, reading the transcript of what he said on the stand during the episode, I would have to say it was his recent incarceration. It was obviously a shock to his system, the solitude, claustrophobia, and uh, humiliation. Anything else? Dr. Truman feels he's been betrayed by the woman he planned to marry, Blair Kramer, and more importantly by his mother. Both women have caused him a great deal of anguish. Objection? Conjecture? Your Honor, Ms. Kramer's testimony is a matter of record, and Dr. Saybrook's expert evaluation of my client's mental state is ordered by the court. Objection overruled. Proceed, Mr. Casey. Dr. Truman, as everyone well knows, is a prominent surgeon. I believe the kind of pressure he's been under, patients entrusting their very lives to him, has made him vulnerable to depression even before the arrest. In fact, he told me he has suffered severe mood things throughout his life. And, as I said before, for a man like him to be incarcerated would be psychologically debilitating, to say the least. And add to that his sense of betrayal, particularly by his mother, the recent loss of his son, it would all be too much for him. And, to put it in layman's terms, as you suggested, he finally snapped. Then, is it your expert opinion that Dr. Truman is mentally and emotionally unfit to stand trial? It is. Thank you. Oh, she is lying, Your Honor. He is faking it, and Marty Saybrook is lying through her teeth. Oh, what's wrong, sweetie? Oh, she must be hungry. I'll get her bottle. That should do the trick, huh? I kept her in the same schedule she was on before you guys left, so, uh... I'm sure you did a wonderful job. Thank yeah, you. Perfect. You want to feed her? It's just I haven't seen her in a couple of days, so yeah. I... It's fine. You know what? You go ahead. No, no, no. It's like you said. It's cool. Nash, I have her all the time. It. It's okay. Go ahead. I... Feed the kid. She's hungry. <laughs> come here, come here. Hey. Oh. Hey. You hungry? You hungry? Uh, speaking of hungry, here we go. We're going home to an empty fridge. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You know, I'm going to go grocery shopping first thing in the morning. Well, if you guys need diapers or formula, I got lots here. So. No, actually, we're, we're calling that. I'm talking about us, you know, uh, tonight. How about a Rody's burger? Mmm. Yeah, that sounds good. You want to come? Who, me? No, I. You, <laughs> You guys are still on your honeymoon, technically, right? You should be alone. Dude, yeah. are you hungry or not? Yeah, I am, but come on. Listen, I'm going to dress her up in her new outfit that we bought her in Puerto Rico. Trust me, you wouldn't want to miss it. No, I wouldn't want to do that. Are you coming? 
They're making us an offer we can't refuse. Alrighty then, that's enough narcissism for one day. Hey, hey, you want to see somebody real handsome? I think I got a picture somewhere. There it is. Tommy. Yeah, he's a real good looking kid. Obviously adopted. Yeah, I guess I kind of just stepped right into that one, didn't I? I want to see him soon. Are you kidding me? You and your nephew have a lot of bonding to do. I want you to understand, it's going to be a while, John. You know? You got a lot of skin grafts. You got a lot of healing. And I tell you, brother, you're going to be in a world of pain. Worth it. Oh, you bet it is. Hey, did you know that they got Tony on doing your old job? Tell him not to hang any pictures. I'll pass it along. I can't believe that. We'll have order in this court immediately. The next person who speaks out of turn in this courtroom will be thrown out and not allowed back for the remainder of this trial. Is that clear? How can you be so calm? You make a scene, you get tossed. Miss Williamson, do you have, have any you questions for no. this witness? I do. Please proceed. Your Honor. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Saber. Several weeks ago, the court appointed you to do a psychiatric evaluation of Dr. Truman. Is that correct? Yes. And as stated in earlier testimony, you did six sessions with Dr. Truman? I did. Dr. Saber, have you ever known a patient, either yours or a colleague's, to fake a mental breakdown? I've heard of it, yes. But has it ever happened to you with one of your patients? No. As far as you know. Excuse me? Well, I mean, if someone was good at faking, you couldn't know. Objection. What's the point? I assure you there is a point, Your Honor, if the court would allow me a little leeway. Overruled. Proceed, Miss Williamson. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Dr. Saybrook... Could you at least concede that it's possible that you had a patient that was faking a mental breakdown and you didn't know it? I suppose. Then I believe it's also fair to conclude that Dr. Truman could be faking this mental breakdown. I'm a psychiatrist, Ms. Williamson. If a patient were faking I'm a mental sure, breakdown... I'm I... sure you want to believe that you would see through it, but let's face it. None of us are immune to deception. I mean, brilliant actors convince us all the time that they're actually crying or they're laughing or they're emotionally breaking down and, and we're very moved, but we know they're just acting. The defendant has ongoing psychological problems unless he's a very good actor. And Dr. Truman fooled a lot of people in this town, a lot of very smart people for a very long time. Thank you, Your Honor, but I believe I've made my point. But I will elucidate for the court. For Dr. Saybrook to draw absolute conclusions about Dr. Truman's mental stability or the lack thereof based upon what amounts to approximately one month of therapy before the alleged mental breakdown and only one session afterwards is presumptuous, if not downright ludicrous. And I reserve the right to recall this witness and I request a recess so that I can arrange to have Dr. Truman evaluated by another psychiatrist. Dr. Saybrook, you're excused for now. This court will reconvene in the morning. In the meantime, the prisoner will be taken under a 24-hour suicide watch. All rise. All right, then. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Judge, come back. No, that's it. I'm that's right. I cannot believe that Spencer is trying to pull us. I'm not going to tell Michael. He's going to be furious. There's no way to tell it. No, you have a lot going on right now. Um, Michael wanted me to just remind you about your point. Okay, I'll be there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mom. You don't have to keep lying, Mom. Shut up.
Shut protect up. Protect that nasty man. Shut Zoom. up, Spencer. What are you doing? Baylon, would you get this crazy man away from me? Take care of it. I'll protect Baker. Don't do that. You don't have to worry. Shut up, Spencer. Marty, I'd like to have a word with you, please. I have nothing to Marty, say to you. Marty, don't you walk away. Marty! Marty, don't you... Don't walk away from me! Hello? Amazing, don't you think this is Marty's revenge against me? Well, of course it is. Marty's trying to get back at the two of us, Ty. Can't you see that, Evangeline? Whatever her motive was, the question is whether Casey's tactic will work. Excuse me. I have to go call Nora. And you know, I know what happened between Todd and Marty in the past. And I can only imagine how you must feel about it, Blair. But it has no bearing at all on this case. I'm going to go do my job. Please. You're looking a little pale. I did not pretend to be in love with that despicable man for months just to see him beat this, Todd. I want him to pay. I want Spencer to pay. Maybe even more than you do. Here, Clint took that one. Mm. Looking cute. Oh, my gosh. She's gorgeous. I don't think you can take a bad picture of Brie, though. Absolutely not possible. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi. Is that Brie? Yeah. I'm shamelessly bragging about my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Wow, look at those eyes. She just gets more beautiful all the time. I think so, too. <laughs> Where's your son? Oh, Lindsay's watching him. I just came to pick up something for dinner. Huh? But uh, I'm actually glad that you're here. Is something wrong? Well, uh, I just came from the courthouse. Oh, why don't you sit down? Oh, thanks. Yeah, in a, in a nutshell, Spencer had a breakdown on the stand. Well, at least he pretended to have a breakdown, and then the judge called a recess so that a doctor could come in and examine him, and the, the doctor turned out to be Marty Saybrook. What did she say? She backed up his insanity act. I don't want to tell Michael. Oh, my God. Todd's going to be livid. Well, he sure isn't happy. Did the judge believe Spencer? I don't know. I couldn't tell. Jesse! Oh, 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 look, I gotta get, get my dinner. It's Bye, guys. Nice. Good to see you. What happened? I thought you were on your honeymoon. We were, and now we're back. Yeah, we decided to come back early. Is there a problem? Yeah, no problem. We just, we just really miss Jamie and Bree. <laughs> I'll, I'll go get a table. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks. I've been showing Kelly and Marcy pictures of you. Yes, and they don't do her justice because she's so gorgeous. <laughs> Kelly, how's your little guy? He's doing better and better every day. Oh, thank you. And I, I tried to call Natalie, but all I got was voicemail. Natalie? Oh, my God. You two don't know. No. What? What? John McBain is alive. Listen, bro. I wish I could stay, but I have an appointment. Go. See you tomorrow? Absolutely. Johnny, you know, I, I know I've said it a million times, and I'll probably say it a million times more. I, I'm just... I'm so happy to have you back, man. I'm so... Hug me and I will beat you with my bedpan. <laughs> right. I'll see you. I'll see you. All right, bro. I love you, man. You too. So, what are you doing here? I thought Drowney told you to go home to get some rest. Yes, well, I got a second wind, so I decided to come back. Yeah? Mm-hmm. How's he doing? Surprisingly, he's doing very well. Really good mood. You didn't go home, did you? I mean, like, you didn't go home at all. No. I went to Spencer's trial. Really? What happened? I'll let Marcy fill you in. Natalie. Look, I just, I want to go in and see John, okay? Yeah. Hey. Hey. 
I know that your brother was visiting with you, so if you just want to rest. Please stay. I didn't say I was leaving. Good. <laughs> So, what are you guys talking about? Oh, you know, we talked about uh, the weather, football, you. I'm going to step outside and call the station. Okay. John's alive? Oh, my God. It's a miracle. It is a miracle. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, he has a long recovery ahead of him, but he's alive. I can hardly wait to talk to Natalie. Natalie has not left his side, and I'm sure she's there right now, and, of course, he's not allowed any visitors except family, so. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you two join us? No, sweetheart, thank you. We actually just ate, and I've got to go and find Todd, see what happened at the trial. Yeah, and I need to get back to the hospital. But thank you. Welcome back. Thanks. Hey. Goodbye, my sunshine. There's so much to be happy about. John's alive. I can't believe it. I know. It's absolutely wonderful. Oh, right. I agree. One of these days, you and Zane are going to be such good friends. I just know it. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, my darlings, both of you. I'll see you later. See you, Bye, you Lord. Oh, my God. Hey, Tess. How you doing? It's me, Reg. Blair, hey. hi. I am so sorry no, I'm fine. late. Just five minutes, no big deal. Something wrong? Yeah. Marty Saybrook. Marty. Marty Saybrook. She's a psychiatrist that testified on Spencer's behalf. Said that he had this psychotic breakdown and was unable to stand trial. And the judge bought this. I don't know. He um, took a recess and said Evangeline could get a second opinion. I'm telling you, if this guy gets to serve out his time in an so institution rather than a prison. Spencer was faking it. Yeah. It obvious to everybody except Marty Saybrook, of course. No. Listen, take a breath. Listen, you are under an incredible amount of stress. No, she right did now. it Let's deliberately. Go. She did it deliberately to hurt Todd and me. I know that. Blair, stop. Now. I'm your doctor. So, um, why don't we take your blood pressure? Oh, yeah, I'll take my blood pressure. I'm sure it's, it's just straight out the roof, thanks to that witch. So you'll call me to schedule another examination for my client with a psychiatrist of your choosing, of course. Oh, I'll let you know. Won't change anything. But I don't blame you for making every possible effort. My effort will make that little show you and Truman just put on a complete waste of time. Stay positive. I like the challenge. But I'm confident 48 will declare Spencer unfit for trial. Don't hold your breath. Hey. Nice job, dirtbag. Excuse me. This, uh, this scheme of yours and Truman, that's a nice job. It's not gonna work, though. Truman's gonna fry. Don't hold your breath. Your client's in for the shock of his life, the... And he's not gonna see it coming. I'm not talking to you. Not anymore. You told him you thought I was nuts. I don't think you're nuts, Dr. Truman. I just don't think you're competent to stand trial. 
And just because I don't think you're competent, I still believe you could be guilty. So you're not on my side then? Huh? I have nothing to do with deciding your fate. I'm here to help, that's all. Look, and the only way I can do my job is if you were completely honest with me about, about what you think and how you feel. Then the things I've done? <laughs> of course. Listen to this, Doc. I've done things that even a shrink like you would not believe. Why don't you let me decide that for myself? Remember, anything you say will be protected under the doctor-patient confidentiality. It would be inadmissible in court. So you and Michael were talking about me? You know, uh, grave robbing is a felony. Oh. Yes, well, I was kind of hoping you weren't going to find out about that. Hmm. Well, you know, you would have, if you thought that I was alive, you know. I might have done the same thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I learned it from the best. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, listen, I was thinking, I'm, I'm going to go get a sandwich and maybe uh, hang around here tonight again, if that's okay with you. I like that. Okay. You want anything? A newspaper? Maybe you want to fill me in on what's going on in the trial. Um, court recessed for today, and uh, defense hasn't rested yet. Michael told me about Truman's meltdown. Is there anything else? I'm sorry, I, I, I don't remember you. Well, I remember you real well. You, you guys all friends? No, Jessica's husband. Jessica? My name's Jessica, I'm not Tess. I'm sorry, my mistake. I was sure you were this girl named Tess. She was a lot of fun. Hey. Oh my gosh. She's the cutest little thing. She's a doll. I know. Maybe we gotta get her and Tommy together soon. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. You know, maybe who knows? Maybe they'll turn out to be best buds. I'm sure they will. <laughs> well, look, I gotta get going. I'll see you soon. See All you, Marcy. Right. Bye. I'm sorry about that. You don't have to be sorry about anything. Do you remember him? Yeah, he and Tesla. I had a couple of times. That's another life. It doesn't mean anything now anymore. What kind of game are you playing? Bored little wifey looking for a little fun on the side. I'm down with that. You see. I know. Revealing your secrets would be the best way to get back at the people who you believe are persecuting you. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'll tell you. Maybe I won't. The thing is, I have learned over the years that it's always best to hold back a few cards that you haven't played yet. You need help, Spencer. I truly believe that. Don't. You just want to punish Todd and Blair, don't you? It's not true. My personal feelings have nothing to do with like this. Michael, can we not tell anybody about this? I don't want to back in there, okay? Blair, 
You're my patient. So anything and everything that we talk about right now is confidential. Besides, there's nothing to discuss until we get the test results back. You know, you need a CT scan. But you think the brain tumor's back on you? Never said that. You did. But it is something that we have to rule out. What if it is bad? Then we deal with it. Look, let, let's not speculate. Let's let's just deal with the problems at hand, okay? We'll wait for your test results to come back, and I'll schedule you an appointment with a neurologist. Everything I ordered is ready to pick up. Terrific. Thanks. Hey, Todd. Hey. hey. You're late. You missed the big show. Yeah, I know. Are you all right? Yeah. What? Marcy told me about Mark Saybrook's testimony. Yeah, I'm not worried about it, though. Truman's going to get his one way or another. Really? Are you planning on taking care of him yourself? Is that it? No, it's not worth it. Excuse me. Just tell me now. After Spencer had his little meltdown, his lawyer brought in a shrink. They're trying to say that he's unfit for trial. They should have seen him. They should have seen Truman and his sleazy lawyer. They really think that they're going to get away with it, huh? On the next One Life to Live. What do you want, Nicole? You. This headache is Marty Sabre, is what it is. Are you really here to just to cause trouble for my brother? Marcy and Michael are supposed to be Tommy's parents, and that's where it ends. I came back for you. 